Welcome back. Namaste. In today's class, we'll be working with a block. So the subject is giving relief to your knees. There's many different postures that you can use to take tension out of your knees, retrain your knees, open the knees. But we'll focus on um, relieving that tension with a block today. So we're going to use a couple blocks a strap, have an extra mat, um, have a round block if you have it. If you don't, then I have also, I'm going to show you with just a, a rectangular block, and then have a few blankets. Okay, so let's get started. Before we start our practice, I wanted to let you know about my online programs and workshops. Whether you're new to Iyengar Yoga and want to learn the basics in a systematic way, a seasoned practitioner looking to revisit the essentials, or a yoga teacher seeking inspiration. These programs and workshops are self-paced, allowing you to make consistent progress and revisit specific topics whenever you like. You can find the link in the description below. With that said, let's begin our practice today. Okay, to begin with, I'd like you to have three, four blankets, and you can bring those so that you can bring your knees onto these blankets. So their knees are going to be at a height, a bit higher, and then you'll have a block and you'll sit on the block. So the knees are going to come up onto the blankets. And then you'll have the block between the ankles. So I'm going to move the block onto this height and sit on the block there. And then adjust each leg so that it's touching right at the top of the shin bone. And the feet are moving straight back. OK, so here you're in a bent knee position, which when you go into a bent knee position, you always want to make a little bit of space behind the knee, bring the foot back so that you're moving as you're not torquing the knee, but the calf and the thigh are moving together. So you take hold of the front of the ankle and bring that ankle back. So doing the other side, starting with the foot, making a little bit of space, taking the foot, the ankle, and then draw it back. So now the knees, the shin bone is supported, the knees are supported, and you're getting some length through your front of the ankle. So to sit in virasana, this is a nice way to do it so that there's no pressure on your knees. So often we'll sit in virasana, but we'll sit on the floor. So here, this is lifting, lifting the knees up so there's less tension and you can sit in Virasana. So let's, as long as we're here, let's take the arms into Bhadagulianasana, press palms away, and lift the arms up. So as you lift the arms up, lengthen the lower back, move that energy of the lower back up to the middle back, up to the upper back, and extend up through the arms. As you move the outer hips down, feel the outer ankles, bring the outer ankles in, toward the inner ankles, lengthen the toes back, press the hands up, lifting up, and then bring the arms down. Change the cross on the fingers, moving out, and lifting up. Stay with your breath, lift your lower back up, lift the front chest, so essentially, you're lengthening from the pubic bone up through the front of the body, from the back, the tops of the shoulders moving down, shoulder blades moving down, tailbone moving down, outer hips moving down, lower back lifting up, and the long muscles along each side of the spine extending up. And then bring the hands down. OK, so we'll come out of this now. Carefully, bend your knees. Take your blankets to the side, and then come up. 
All right, now you're going to have, if you have a rounded block, you're going to use the rounded block. Hopefully you were able to find one. If not, this, we're going to just save that. So if you, don't, if you don't have a rounded block then, or you haven't gotten it, go get it. So now we're going to use the block here. And we'll bring this right to the top of the knees. All right, so you're going to use the strap as well. Strap's not required, but it's, it's helpful, especially if you have bowed legs. OK, so the kneecap <coughs> has a few muscles around it. And sometimes those muscles aren't working. So think of <coughs> the patella. This is a bone here at the front of the knee. And that bone, just like this block, has a front side and it has a back side. So I want you to think of bringing the front side toward the back side and the back side toward the front side. OK, so that we'll have four corners of the kneecap moving from the back to the front and the front to the back. So let's start with that. Have the block. And as you bring the block there, see how what direction your knees are facing. So you want your knees to face forward, right over your second and third toes. So there'll be a slight rotation of the inner knee moving back and the outer knee moving back. So here, I just want you to focus on bringing the outer knee back. Stand up in Tadasana. And now bring the inner knee back. So both the outer knee and inner knee are moving back. Now, the front of the patella, the kneecap, move toward the back of the knee. And then at the same time, move the back of the patella toward the front of the knee. And from there, press down into the feet and lift that block up. So you'll feel the inner knees lifting the block up rolling the inner knees back, back of the patella moving forward. Feel how the buttocks moves forward, the chest lifts. So you can take your strap, buckle it up, make sure it's straight. Have it around your calf. So before you buckle it, bring it around your calf. Bend your knees slightly so you're still holding the block. And then pull the strap so that the most outward part of your calf is with that strap, and then pull it. Start with your knees bent, and then lift your head, lift your trunk, keeping the knees bent like you're in Utkatasana and then start to straighten the legs. Inner knees move back, outer knees move back, moving the front of the patella, knee bone moving back toward the back, at the same time the back toward the front, and now lifting all four corners of the patella up, inner, outer, front, back, Reach your arms out, come into Urdhva Hastasana. So stay with the feet. Mounds of the big toes, the heels. Bring the head of the toes down and stretch the toes forward. As you move the inner thighs back, bring the buttock and tailbone forward. And reach the block up. Lift up with that block. Stay with your breath. You can feel that length coming through the inner thigh. From the Press the inner heel down. As you lift the block up, feel that length on the, from the inner knee to the inner thigh up to the groin. And then bring your hands down. And now come into Utkatasana. So you're going to bend your knees. When your knees bend, Maybe the strap has gotten a little bit loose, so just be willing to tighten it. Hands on your hips, thumbs at your tailbone, 
and bend the knees. Squeeze that block. Roll your shoulders back. Coming down. Now move your hips back towards your heels. Lift your chest. You take your arms out. Shift your hips back over your heels. You feel the weight on your heels. Lift the pubic bone up. Lift up through the navel. Lift up through the front chest. And start to reach the arms up. Keep the weight moving back. Keep pressing into that block. So bring firmness to the knees. Breathe. Drop the top of the shoulders, lift the back of the head, and reach the arms up. Press into the feet, lift the arms, straighten the legs, and bring the arms down. OK, take your block out carefully. Take your strap off. And now you're going to either have the rounded block at the wall. If you have the rounded block at the wall, that's great. If you don't have the rounded block, you're going to take a regular block and bring it to the wall. And then you'll have a rolled mat, which you'll cushion that block with a little bit. As you can see, this is rounded. Here, the ball of the foot goes onto that rounded block, which is very handy to lift the toes up. So here, I'm going to fold the mat, fold it a couple times, even roll it. So I can press into that. So I'm going to bring my foot up onto that so it stays, and then walk the other leg back. So I'm coming into Utita Trikonasana. So taking a wide distance. My heel in line with the back arch, four and a half, five feet apart. And then I'm going to have one other block for my hand. OK, so now here, our toes are lifted. So when the toes are lifted, you can start to engage that kneecap into the socket and lift up and connect with the quadricep, lengthening through the backs of the legs. So you'll come down, bring one hand onto the block, Press the hand down. Bring this buttock forward. Move this thigh back. Keep the toes lifting up, and then reach the arm over. So finding the distance that you need for this block, adjust the block as you need it. You could even bring the block down further. And then other hand over to the wall. Now lift the toes, lift the kneecap. Move the front to the kneecap toward the back, and the back toward the front. Turn the chest. Look up underneath your arm. Stay grounded in the back foot. Lift the back arch. Move the back thigh back. And keep that lift where we had the block from the inner knees to the inner legs. And then reach up, come up, turn the feet. Carefully come out and turn to do the other side. So have that foot raised. Take the other foot out to the side. So you have a nice extension between both legs. Grounding on the outer heel, lift up through the arch. Now. Remember where the block was. Lift those inner legs up, inner knees up. Make sure you have your block in position. So either the taller block or the lower block. There are three, three heights for the block. So take enough height that you can stay high. Because if you've got some knee pain, you don't want to go too low and create any more tension. Lift your arm up, come forward toward the wall. Walk your fingers to the wall, lengthen that side of the trunk. Bring your hand down. I'm going to take the higher block so you can see. Press the hand down. Now, 
As I'm in this pose right now, I can see I'm leaning over toward the block. I want to bring the calf, the thigh, and the buttock toward the center. So you're on the mounds of the toes, you're on the inner heel, but you're on the outer heel as well. So keep that outer calf moving in, outer thigh moving in, back thigh moving back, and now lift up where we had the block, the inner legs, reach the arm up, and then bring the arm over the head. Lengthen from the lower waist through the armpit area. Have the fingertips at the wall, and then turn. Lift the toes, tighten the kneecap, move the front of the knee toward the back of the knee, back of the knee toward the front. Keeping that connection with the pelvis, turn. And then inhale, come up, reach both arms up, hands on your hips, turn your foot, and then carefully come back. Okay, so I hope you could feel the difference with your knees, with that height, when your knee was on height. So we're going to use the same block and the same height now, and we're going to come into Prasarita Padatanasana, or um, sorry, Parsva Kanasana, Uttita Parsva Kanasana. Okay, in Uttita Parsva Kanasana, we're going to have the block on the higher height and lengthwise, so the narrow edge is at the wall and the other edge coming toward the center. And then I'm again folding that mat, having one blanket here, or one block here, and then carefully bring your foot up so your toes are lifted, your toes are pressing against the wall, and then start to walk your other foot back, getting that length. You're going to bend your knee, and as you bend the knee, you want the knee tracking over the second and third toes. All right, so as you come down, you can use your hand at the wall so you're not leaning into the knee. So from, from the tailbone moving forward, bend the knee, one hand at the wall, extend through that back leg, and then you can bring the hand over, have the block there for you. You can be on the fingertips, or you can have the whole hand on the block. Move that back buttock forward, front thigh back, bend the knee, and extend the arm up, bring the arm over the head. So a safe way to do some standing poses when the knee is having some challenges. So making sure it's always in the center. And then come up. Carefully come out, come down. And then you'll switch to do the other side. So bringing the toes up, have the block on the other side. Walk the foot back. And just test your stride to see, can you bend the knee? You want the knee over the heel. Then come back up. Turn the chest, turn the pelvis toward the wall in front of you. And as you bend the knee with that external rotation, coming down, bring your hand to the wall so you don't move towards your knee. But from the foot, you're lifting up through the ankle, up through the shin bone, up into the knee, and the knee moving back into the femur bone. Extend through that back leg if you need more space. Coming down. And then go forward. Bring your hand onto the block. Pressing down. Straighten the back leg, bend the front knee, and bring the arm over. That will help you with your balance as well. Bringing that buttock forward, front thigh back, turn the trunk.
and then extend the arm up, bring the hand onto your hip, straighten the leg, take your hand back to the wall, bring your foot down, and come down. Okay, so you'll have one block to sit on, and then you'll have blocks at the wall. And you're going to sit on the block, come into Dandasana. So here our knees and our calves are elevated, coming right onto the sitting bones, straightening the legs. Have the block flush against the wall. All right, so as you press your feet into the wall, the mounds, the heels, look at your ankles and be on the feet in such a way that both ankle bones are parallel to one another. And as you draw the toes away from you, away from the wall, tighten the kneecap again, lengthen up through the thighs, bring your hands back, roll your shoulders back. So most people aren't bending their knee enough. So it's not hypermobile, but it's hypo. So here, you're able to bring the front of the knee toward the back of the knee, and at the same time, bring the back of the knee toward the front of the knee. Okay, so, but some people hyperextend. So if you hyperextend, it's usually the calf that's moving down and the knee has no control. So if you do hyperextend, you can bring that roll behind the calf and then learn to be aware of what's happening with your knees. So you're moving it into the socket, but you're really lifting it up. So remember we had the block and we were lifting from the inner knee up. So same thing here. You do want to bring the knee into the socket, that front of the kneecap moving down, back of the kneecap lifting up, and then lift up through the inner knees. As you keep the attention in the feet, so the feet are grounding you, you're lifting up from there. Hips are moving down, lower back sacral band moving in, lower back lifting up. And then you can bring your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, and come forward to the wall. Have your fingertips at the wall. So bending from the hips, lengthening, sacral band moving in, lengthening from the lower back, walk your fingers up. Keep your calves extending towards your heels. Keep that equal pressure on your feet. Bring the head of the toe the neck of the toe onto the wall and all the other toes and then lengthen them. Kneecap lifting up, inner knee lifting up. Concave the back, so bring this middle part of the back in, look up. And then release. Bring your arms out, interlace the fingers, reach up. So as you're lifting up from the lower back, front waist corners, your hips are moving down, head of the femur bone moving down, front of the calf, or front of the patella, the knee moving down, front of the patella moving down, back of the patella lifting up, reaching up. and then take your hands down. Change the cross on the fingers, again lengthening out. Bring that dorsal spine into the body as you lift the arms up. Outer hips descending, inner thighs descending. Reach the inner knee as if you still had that block. Reach up. And then bring the hands down. Okay, if you're not hyperextending, you don't need to have that calf supported, but you can try and just see. Maybe one of your knees is hyperextending and one is um, not. So just be aware of what's happening in your body and use the correct prop for what's happening for you. 
Okay, so I hope you've learned some things here that will give you a little bit of relief. And um, maybe if you have pain, maybe if you've had an injury, it will help you to understand the correct action, not going too far, and when you're doing different poses, how you can support yourself. Namaste.